Hello everybody, it's a new year so let's try a new format. In this video I want to show you some close-ups of the actual work, working on the left and right aileron. After match drilling we start with deburring all the drill holes. Deburring is all the small pieces of aluminum by drilling. See so I do it here very slowly. You have to do it per hole, uh, so it's a lot of work. And uh, what you do is you make all the holes uh, really nice so that uh, they fit very nice to the spars or rips or stiffeners. I do it slow to show how it works, but it's uh, actually you do it much faster. Next task is scuffing. Uh, you do it with Scots Bright. It's kind of a sandpaper and it uh, removes the. Um, it makes the, the the primer stick better to the aluminum. I do this before I do all the dimpling. That's because if you don't, uh, you really ruin your Scotch Bright pads uh, because then the dimples protrude from the aluminum and they uh, yeah then it uh, breaks down very fast. So I do this before actually dimpling the the parts. Again, it's a uh, quite an intensive job to do because uh, I do it for um, yeah all materials. Not really sure if it's necessary but uh, uh, I just do it anyway. Okay next, next up is dimpling. So dimpling is trying to get the rivets flush. Uh, there are several ways to do it. This is the DRDT2 machine. This is a very nice machine. Uh, there are two parts, a male and a female side called a dimple set. You can see you push part of the aluminum inside, which makes a little hole in there. And this way the rivets are flush, which really reduces drag um, when you're flying. You can see if you put the flush rivet in there, then it's really smooth and uh, there will not be that much wind, wind resistance. There are other ways to dimple it for skin dimpling and also for um, stiffen dimpling. The DRD2 is really, really great because it works very fast and uh, yeah, it's very simple to do. Also, it, prov it provides a consistent dimple. There are also things like C-frames where you have to hit a, a plunger on a ham with a hammer. Uh, some people say it's better, but I like this one better. It's faster and it's I think it's more consistent. Needs less expertise, I guess. Okay, these are the stiffeners. You can also do stiffness with the DRDT2. The stiffeners are in the ailerons to stiffen the structure instead of ribs. So you put them on the inside of the skin and the dimple hole of the skin falls into the dimple hole of the stiffener. Another way to make dimples is using the pneumatic squeezer. Uh, you can use that machine for both dimpling as for riveting. Uh, here I show the 
how to dimple. So we take the same dimple sets that we used in the DRDT2 and you can put them in the pneumatic squeezer and as you can see this is another way to dimple the stiffeners. The result is the same because it's also the same dimple set so there's not much difference. Um, I like for small for small pieces of aluminum like stiffeners and ribs I like this the, the this one better than the DRDT2. I like the DRDT2 better for let's say um, skins and large surfaces. Now I'm doing all the stiffness that were left over. And you can also do some skins as you can see because those curves you cannot do with the DRDT2 because you will dent it. You can do the same with ribs, but of course when the ribs become smaller it's impossible. It's not something that you can reach because the the yoke of the of the pneumatic squeezer is too big. So the last few holes you, you, you cannot do. See? It just doesn't fit in there. So you have to find another way. There are a few ways to do it. So there is a dimple set that you can use a pop rivet pliers and you just push it through. This way you dimple with pliers. It works. But I'm not really fond of it, so I hardly ever use it. Although it does work, it is very time consuming. And also I don't really like the the holes. It's yeah. It's just not good enough. See, it's even it's even hard to get the the rivets in. So uh, another way to do it is um, using the same dimple set. And using pliers, normal pliers, not like the pop rivet plier. This is a vice plier. And another plier. And the, the advantage of this method is that you can press harder. And at least then the, um, the dimple is better. It's more, more through and through. It gives the same depth as using the pneumatic squeezer. But also a little cumbersome. And again, the holes are not so nice as with the uh, dimple sets. I found another way, and that is actually using the dimple set for, that we use for the DRDT2 and for the plier. In combination with the the plier dimple set, the the male one actually fits in the female one, and I use the same same technique with two pliers, and it really works very well. It's not so handy again. It's, uh, it takes some time, but it's only a few holes you have to do this way. But at least it gives a real nice dimple. Probably because of the uh, the pilot pin in the male side of the dimple set.
I know there are some people that take the um, have special vice pliers with dimple sets welded on them. That's probably very easy and very handy. But yeah, since there are only a few holes, you have to do it this way. Next up is countersinking. So there are parts which you cannot dimple because they're too thick. You can see these doublers, these spar doublers. The material is too thick. You could probably dimple them, but it would distort the material, and it's probably not a good idea. But to create flush rivets, or let's say to to be able to use the to rivet it flush, you can do countersinking, where you actually drill a piece out of it. So you can only do this with uh, thicker aluminum. If you would do it on skin, you would just drill everything because skins are just too too thin to do this. You have to check which side we have to uh, countersink. And there's a special countersink with a countersink stop, as they call it. So you can uh, determine the depth that you want to countersink. Same with the, uh, the ribs of the ailerons. I put clicos in there for the holes that I shouldn't countersink. Uh, this way I don't make mistakes. I use the technique a lot where I just put in, you could say dummy clicos to prevent me from drilling holes or countersinking holes which shouldn't be countersunk. Now the same technique we use for the spars where the skin is attached to the spar. I first did it from the top side, but actually what I do now is, is better. You have more, you can see what you're doing. So I like that better. So it's better to do it from the side. Um, it, it, it enables you to control the perpendicularity 
because you have to really uh, stay perpendicular. Every time I check some holes at random to see if, if they fit, if the rivets are still flush. And sometimes you have to drill a hole again, a little bit more. Okay, here you can see how to countersink the spars. You find the correct hole. And use the countersink drill to countersink the hole. And you can test it with a flush rivet. If you can find it. It's very simple actually, when you have the depth set correctly, you can just count the single holes. Okay, that was it. I showed you how to deburr, scuff, dimple and countersink all the parts. Okay, continue building my pie in the sky. <laughs>